So, <coughs> as far as I can tell, you are not seeing anything. I don't think I'm seeing anything. That's not helpful. Um, if there's anybody here, can you confirm that in fact there is no video? Um, Twitch did an update and <clears throat> uh, now all of a sudden my, all my screens are blank. This is not good. Um, so I don't know if there's anybody out there. Um, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to just be flailing here for a second. It's like... So, okay. If we hide that, does that matter? No. I didn't mean to do that, I don't think. It certainly didn't help anything. No. This is very frustrating. Um, why are we? Ah. Okay. Time to do some googling. Um, Twitch Studio. Update blank screen. Um, let me say something over on Discord as well. <sighs> this is super annoying. Um, this is all people viewing. There's a lot of stuff about people viewing getting black screens. That is not helpful. How about that? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> This is so annoying. Huh. 
Started? Well, no, yes, but um, <laughs> the um, mute the mic in case there actually is somebody listening.
Okay, if you're here and you can hear me, I'm going to probably... Oh, there are some other people here. Can anybody see anything? Can anybody, like, confirm that you're getting black nothingness like I'm seeing black nothingness on my end? Because I'm getting Zippo. Um, and it is not helpful. Um, uh, all my scenes show up as just black screens with a little tiny square sad face in them. The camera appears to be on. Camera lights on. Um, and yeah, I have no idea. I guess I could check sort of like look on my phone and see if I'm alive. Um, what does this look like on my phone? That's a good question. Twitch.tv slash Nathan Fee. Boom. Boom. Oh. Actually, I do see something there. Oh, and I do see the second monitor scene, but I don't see any screen share. And so now, okay, so it seems to be working, I just can't see myself. And there's really weird audio because I'm uh, hearing myself out of the phone with the delay. Well, then maybe we'll just try it. Get out of this. Boom. Boom. Um, go away. Go away. Go away. Okay. So I think I'll just have to try to deal with the fact that I can't see myself. Which is going to be weird. Um, so let me actually make a note here. Apparently, other folks can see me and the screen, so we're going to press on. Okay, um, that's weird, and I don't know what's going on, but we will cope. Um, apologies for the confusion, and hopefully somewhere between the this stream and the 2 o'clock stream, I'll figure out why the... Um, the display on my end is all messed up. But it does seem to be working for you folks, so we'll let that go. Hi, welcome to Unhindered by Coding. Um, this is Nick McPhee, lost and confused, as always. Um, this is episode 48, if I'm doing the counting correctly, um, uh, of Unhindered by Coding. Um, we're going to be returning to the Ice Repos Project, which is a Rust Wasm app um, to batch archive um, GitHub repositories. And uh, we need to, um, we finally have, I, we're dealing with the problem that I've been putting off for a long time, which is authentication. So we can't archive repositories unless we can authenticate ourselves. And um, uh, that has, OAuth is complicated. I mean, it's manageable, but it's complicated. I've never done it in Rust. We're using Cloudflare workers for the server. I've never used them. Um, 
So there's a whole bunch of stuff here I've never done before. Um, and so I've been kind of putting it off. Uh, we got to it on Saturday, flailed like, on Tuesday, flailed like mad. Did some homework. I think hopefully we'll be in a slightly better place today. But I do expect a lot of chaos and confusion. So be prepared for not the most coherent of experiences. So, um, <clears throat> let us get started. Actually, I'm going to do something about this curtain. Momentary pause. The sun was coming around and blinding me and probably... I can't see the camera, but probably making my face look rather badly burned in. Okay, so let's uh, try to make this something happen here. Um, now, in my hunting, um, I think yeah, this is the one I want. So there's actually a very nice YouTube video, um, which he doesn't link to here. You'd think actually he would, but... Um, by coding to the moon on um, using OAuth in Rust in U. Um, he's using AWS uh, tools instead of um, GitHub. Um, so he's authenticating his AWS's OAuth um, and using their Cognito service for that, um, where we'll be authenticating its GitHub. Since it's GitHub, we have to prove identity to, to be able to um, archive these repositories. Um, and so we'll get, we can't just use his straight out of the box, but I'm hopeful that we can use his uh, basic ideas in a pretty reasonable way. Oh, I should mention before I forget, daylight savings time in the U.S. happens tonight early tomorrow morning, technically. So if you're outside of the U.S. and you have a different daylight savings time weekend than this one, we are going to shift by an hour relative to each other um, uh, starting, uh, well, for Tuesday, Wednesday, and next Saturday's streams at, at a minimum. Um, and then... You know, I don't know, depending on where you are. I know that in the UK, they switched last weekend. So this week, last Tuesday, Wednesday, and today, we're sort of off by an hour less, if I did the math right, um, than normal. Um, and then we will repair that and be back to being six hours away from the UK um, starting tomorrow. So fingers crossed that will all happen and it won't be too confusing, but I figured I'd mention it. Okay. So, um, two things to start with. First thing, um, so, well, I'm going to say a little bit about his setup. So he has a front end written in U, So that actually matches what we're doing pretty nicely. He has a back end written in active Actic X, um, which we're not using for our back end. We, we're using a Cloudflare worker for our back end. Um, and I guess you could, oh, actually, I don't know. I don't know if you could use Actic X inside a Cloudflare worker if the worker infrastructure would interfere with that. Not 100% sure. Don't think we care at the moment because we're not using Actic X. Um, uh, so he's using Actic X on his back end, so there's going to have to be some differences there. He also uses a specific um, AWS JSON Web Token crate that doesn't make sense for us, but that crate is the, the same person has made a JSON Web Tokens plural crate um, that is a more general, not AWS specific version of that crate. And so I think that we can use that, um, hopefully, to do our token management. So I'm going to try all of that, and we'll see what happens. Um, so the first thing he does, actually, and I think I'd seen this, but I didn't take very when I when I first realized I was going to have to do um, 
authentication and yada, yada, yada. I did a bunch of Googling and reading, but I didn't take very good notes. I feel like I saw this crate and I know I actually saw the video ages ago and then forgot about it because I didn't, like I said, I didn't take really good notes. I'm trying to do a better job of that now. Um, and the, uh, it's a U OAuth 2 crate. And that is here. And this is actually pretty nice. Um, and uh, does some pretty cool stuff for us. So we can look at an example here, or I think we can go back to the front end of... Um, no, it's probably in main. Uh, front end app. Is that in here? But I didn't see it. Where is, where's his app? Uh, I think it's here. Because uh, this is all just the blog post stuff. Uh, where where does his app then go? Um, source. Is it in lib? Oh, it's in lib. Okay. So yeah, so here's a nice example. This OAuth 2, this U OAuth 2 crate uh, does some neat stuff. So it gives us a start login and log out method that we can call um, that sort of manages the, how to log your user in and log your user out. So you don't have to think about that stuff. That's kind of cool. Um, it needs a config because it needs to know things like who are you actually trying to log in to. So you need the authorization URL um, and you need the redirect URI um, that you send the authenticator, in our case, GitHub. You have to send it a redirect URI so that GitHub knows who to come back to when the uh, login is finished. So you got to provide all that stuff and you need a client ID, which GitHub gives you. This would be presumably his Amazon Cognito ID. Um, we'll replace it with our um, uh, GitHub ID, client ID. Uh, and then these configs go. Oh, they passed in right here to this OAuth2 component which then saves them. And I'm assuming these start logins and log out have access to that config sort of internally somehow. But the cool thing from our perspective is they've got actually some very nice U components that make it easier to structure your app around authentication. Um, and actually I quite like these and I, wish I had thought about remembered this when I was flailing around on Tuesday because I think this will be um, make things a lot simpler um, so uh, the OAuth 2 component so there's a, a master component OAuth 2 and that has the configuration it also provides a U context um, which is sort of like a state um, but is visible instead of being a global state like we get with Udux, um, Udux being kind of like Redux, uh, the OAuth2 context is state that's visible to anything under the OAuth2 component. Um, so anything that's inside of OAuth2 gets to have access to that state. And that includes, I presume, this config information but more importantly, it will include the information about whether we're logged in and access to relevant tokens. Um, so that's actually pretty nifty. Um, and inside of OAuth2, you have access to a number of special um, components um, that help build a authenticated app, um, which include failure, authenticated, and not authenticated. Um, so if there's been a failure with your OAuth2, you can um, include this failure component and it will display that failure state. Um, OAuth, and then if you provide an authenticated and a not authenticated, 
OAuth 2 will um, automatically route to the right one depending on your state. So where you would maybe kind of expect some kind of if statement here, some kind of conditional, um, you actually just provide both authenticated and not authenticated, and OAuth 2 does the right thing and renders the right component. And I don't know actually how it does that. I haven't looked at the source. Um, my guess is it actually um, renders both of them. It's just that the rendering for one of them doesn't really happen that they both start with an if you're logged in and in authenticated if you're logged in then it does what you know it renders the body of that thing and if you're not authenticated then it just leaves that blank and then not authenticated does the reverse um, and so in his example if you're authenticated you get a logout button uh, you get a header that says hey you're authenticated and then it switches you uh, to the appropriate route um, and uh, renders whatever component your app actually does, um, the things that happen here. Um, and I think basically, so the switch up here, uh, all that happens, all that uh, this example does is route uh, render blogs. Um, so if you're logged in, you can see all the blog entries, and if you're not logged in, you can't see any of the blog entries, which is more or less what we want. If you're not logged in, you can't really do anything, and if you are logged in, then we want it, you to be able to enter a organization and go through those repositories and potentially um, archive them. We could make it so that you could do everything and only have to log in at the very end. Um, but since there is no kind of useful functionality in this app, if you're not logged in or if you can't log in, there's really nothing interesting you can do if you're not able to log in. Having people log in right away seems to be entirely reasonable to me. So we'll probably just follow this model. Um, uh, and then if you're not authenticated, you get a message saying you need to log in and, uh, with the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on the login button. So I think actually what I want to start with is set this piece up. Um, and I had started with the, uh, Cloudflare workers on Tuesday and had gotten pretty befuddled, frankly. Um, and so I think I'm going to start with this, make sure this part works. And then if we have the right redirect URI, then I'm hoping that uh, we can um, get the beginning going and then we'll get it back into the Cloudflare worker business uh, and hopefully it'll all be good in the end. So, um, so let me think, what am I doing? I am uh, coming back to here. So we need you are U O R two um, and, and uh, whoa, didn't like that. Well, okay, let me back over here. U O R two is O four O. I thought when I did this the other day, I could just put empty quotes in and it kind of figured the stuff out. No, it is not happy. Um, why are you? not thrilled this seems weird to me and the rest analyzer i'm so look at let me make this go away <laughs> we are building because i had i had a weird problem on tuesday where um the um vs code and 
Um, and the world got a sing somehow. It was very strange. I didn't really understand what was going on. Um, so actually, I guess we could do cargo add U O auth two. Right, that does a thing. Okay. Um, and it has this open ID stuff. I don't, the OAuth crate, uh, the OAuth 2 crate without U dash in front of it, um, that you use on the strand. It's got some open ID stuff, but apparently that won't work in Wasm. Although we don't need it to work in Wasm. Um, because the, server is going to just be running straight rust in cloudflare it's not going to be using wasm so i don't know i don't know if the u oauth 2 has the wasm dependency for open id and whether that's going to matter um but eh, we'll see um okay so there that worked and it seems happy i don't know what's going on there um so let's reload our app um wanna, 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 wanna. and finish building and then we'll put in the uoauth 2 stuff um and hope that we can make sense of that um <coughs> And thank you, Vorgafa. I, Clee, I'm still figuring out you <coughs> patterns of behavior that make the most sense. Um, and uh, <coughs> I think you're right that uh, cargo add does make more sense. Uh, <coughs> but uh, I had the Tamil file up. I don't know what I thought. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I know somebody, I think it was, is it who might have been you, Agaf, I don't remember, <laughs> told me about the um, the VS Code cargo plugin, which does some nice things like give me the check marks and point out when I can update things. <coughs> um, uh, but, um, and then I think I, decided I should do things here. I don't know. Whatever. But that seemed to have added OAuth 2, so that's good. So now we ought to be able to try to do something like um, what he does here. So in his main app, he needs all of this stuff. Now we do not, we're not as well organized. I'm not as well organized. Um, a lot, most things actually have the home page often its own component, whereas I have, so most of them have main, just starting app, and then have something like this in its own component. And I've got a whole bunch of stuff kind of blobbed in this module together. I'm going to continue with my blobby, uh, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe the local index didn't know about U OAuth 2 and then presumably when I did the um, uh, add here it updated crates.io and then it so if it didn't have it in its local version then it would have pulled that in so that could totally be it or maybe it had it but a different version because the version here is it says this is 29 days ago and especially with all the time off in October it's possible that my um, uh, crates IO local crates IO index hadn't been updated in the last 29 days and that that was the problem is it knew about U OAuth 2 but it didn't know about version 0.4.0 and so when I tried just putting it into the uh, Toml file, it was like, whoa, I don't know about that version. Um, and then the crate add, cargo add 
did all the good stuff. So, yeah, something like that seems to be likely. <laughs> okay, so I want to add um, basically to this, right? Unless I can put it in my app. Can I? Would it make sense for it to be in my app directly? Maybe it would. Um, so, I mean, his main just calls his app and uh, his app then passes off to the things that do actual work. And so that wouldn't be insane for me to do um, that in my app and then I can just keep my home page my uh as the thing that you see if you're authenticated so that wouldn't be a terrible way to do things so let's do that um so basically i'm going to just steal all of this uh, for now um and uh put that here Ooh, and i need to indent all of that apparently boom uh, oh, my indentation's really confused. Um, whoa, did I just paste in the wrong place? Oh no, I just, okay. I indented too much. <laughs> so this all needs to be indented. And then that other HTML is gonna be broken. We have to fix that. So we're going to have this login function. We're going to have this logout function. I will have to replace this information with my information. Um, I forget where. Uh, is that here in profile? I got to get my um, uh, ID. Uh, so I can get my client ID. Let's not worry about that right this second. Um, uh, oh, well, actually, I do need to. Let's let's get um, GitHub OAuth. Boom. Authorize OAuth apps. Because um, this will tell us things like the login. So that's where we, that's the, the URL we send the request to, uh, 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 which is going to be this guy um, instead of AWS. And then, um, so is that going to actually, nope, that takes me to, Registering a new one. I do have. Um, a registration somewhere, but I don't remember where to find that. Um, that'll come from that page. Are where. Where is my that just goes down on this page, which is not helpful. <laughs> and this takes me here, which is not useful. Um, so I need my list of applications where is that your my what's um my i don't think it's this i don't think it's in the um i don't think it's something in here where is that Arr! um oops uh, that was not what I meant, but 
could have been interesting. Is it in here? With code, deploy keys. No. Code security analysis. No, not helpful. Let me make sure. I'm going to go to secrets, but you don't all need to watch that. No, not useful. Uh, so that was not the solution to the problem. Okay, where can I find my GitHub client ID? Applications developer applications tab. So GitHub settings. That was here. GitHub settings. So I need my settings. And it's in here somewhere. Uh, nope, that's my password. Applications. No. Authorized. Oh, auth apps. No. These are people that can see me. That's not helpful. So what was this saying? Go to settings. Applications developer. Applications. There isn't a developer. So I don't think it's there anymore. Developer settings. Maybe down there. OAuth apps. Ho ho! Finally found it. <laughs> okay. So we need the client ID. Oops. Um, and that goes here. And we need the redirect, which we have down here. Uh, and that was what our Cloudflare worker uh, was redirecting to, at least locally. Um, and then obviously we'll have to change the, um, uh, uh, change the URL to be the actual Cloudflare URL when we, um, have that set up and running. But I think that hopefully gives us the right pieces. Um, so that when we're running the Cloudflare thing, it will actually load up. So then we want the HTML for the route um, to be set up here now they have switch render switch and we have switch render root route um, and I think that's just the naming yeah so I have root route here and I think they just called it switch in their example yeah, they just called it switch in their example. So I think that's just a naming difference. Um, so I think we would say root route. Yeah, okay. So I think we would say root route here. Uh, and that would be root route. Um, and then that should load our universe up if they're authenticated and give them this button if they're not. Fingers crossed. And then we will comment this out for now. Uh, and let's see what our app looks like. Um, we are not rebuilding because we did not. Oh, yeah. So there's a whole lot of things that didn't work because we need to import a bunch of things. Um, oops. So we're going to have to import that and we're going to have to import that 
from you, OR2 agent. Uh, I don't know. What do they import over here? You are to basically everything. Uh, so maybe that would be the simplest thing to do. You are to um, prelude. Actually, why don't we just grab? So they have this. They have these two. Let's grab both of those. Boom, boom, boom. And. And let's see what doesn't compile down here. If anything, um, app route. Oh, uh, oh, we called it root route instead of app route. So that's again just a naming thing. Okay, now I think it all compiles. Um, let's let it do its thing. And uh, I'm going to blow my nose quick. Yeah. You'd think cold weather, the hay fever would go away, but that is not yet proven to be true. Okay, so compile, that means, hey, we need to log in, and there's a login button. Now that clearly is a little thin on the ground as far as uh, the way it looks, but it did do a thing. Um, I think for starters, I'm gonna put that in a different paragraph just so it's at least um, uh, down below. Um, and not all, yeah, <laughs> that is some quality stuff, right? Um, so you need to log in, log in. And that failed. Um, uh, oh, okay. So, I'm, oh, and I, for folks that joined late, um, I can't actually see myself. Um, uh, the... There was an update to the Twitch Studio software when I logged in this morning, and it broke the world. Um, and I wasn't even sure I was streaming for quite a while, but apparently I am because I actually joined the stream from my phone and I could see everything there. But I have no visual feedback for what you're seeing, um, and uh, apologies because uh, that's maybe awkward at times. Um, so I expect. You may not be able to read this, but it says Safari can't open the page. 00008787 final is login. Um, and it says that the redirect URI must match the registered callback for this application. But that is true. Um, I think actually the problem is that we're not running anything in. Um, the we're not running the um, Cloudflare worker development environment, and so I think it it couldn't find the page. I'm hoping, um, although the fact that there is this error equals redirect URI mismatch does seem a little weird to me because I thought I had copied this in directly from. Uh, here in fact yes i did um uh oh, oh 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 no um yeah i would have thought that would have been okay well let's see if it is a problem of not currently running the um uh development environment because um, that could be the issue um, so if we come back to here and we um, 
Ooh, ice repos, worker, and uh, wrangler, dev, I think, starts it up. Um, do, 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 And I think this at least compiled. I don't think it works, but I think it at least compiled. Um... Okay, and we're listening at 000 8787, which is what we want to be listening at. So now, if we come back to here and we back up, um, actually, let's just reload to make sure we're all in a good place. We say login. <sighs> See, we should have seen the GitHub. Um, login page unless somehow it saved that info that I'm logged in from last Tuesday but I'm not convinced um, uh, and now if we come back here we get the error stack um, and again, we got this error, the redire redirect URI mismatch. The redirect URI must match the register callback URL for this application. Um, it would be useful if they told us what the past URL was. Uh, don't show this log. Oh, good, good call. Um, this is, this is one of the things that's, I'm not, I had serious doubts about whether I should even do, um, this authentication stuff on the stream because there's just so many ways that you could be revealing information that you don't want to be revealing and it i was uncertain about whether i could manage that gracefully and and i'm not convinced that i am or that i can and that maybe i should just not be doing the authentication stuff um in the stream i should be doing that offline on my own which is a bummer because i like doing stuff on the stream and uh i like the feedback and the help but that is definitely a worry um that information that should not be revealed will be revealed um nothing else like uh like my secret key for this app in GitHub, I don't think I've revealed that, but I think I may have, people have seen parts of it and it would be best if I just made a new one when this is all done, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, so that's not helpful. Um, uh, so I need to let me grab you and get you out of the way then. Um, uh, And so, but I don't know why we're getting that mismatch problem. That uh, is weird because I do feel like I've got the right thing in, unless this isn't what I think it is. So maybe let's go to the documentation for UAuth OAuth 2. Um, so, okay. Does he explain what token URL is? Token URL. 
No, of course not. Uh, but we do have two examples, so let's go to this example. I think that'll be here. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if is off. Hmm. So auth URL is his URL into Amazon Cognito and token URL is where he comes back when he's got when a login has actually happened, right? Uh, Earth. Why is that doing the wrong thing? And if we go to uh, this is yeah. So we're going to provide the redirect URI. And you're getting a post at oh no you're yeah you're getting that's gonna be redirects back to your site with a temporary code and a code parameter and that cut that's this URL here yeah It has to exactly match the thing, but I thought we did. Hmm. I wonder if it's a an HTTPS issue maybe let's have a look at um yeah that's an https there <clears throat> and but this is just an http but maybe github actually sends the request to https um and that means our urls don't match exactly if that's true, that's going to be subtle and annoying. Um, uh, and I don't know if those coordinates, I mean, I guess I could find out quick. Um, uh, I can have a quick look. No, those coordinates were um, actually... I think well, that's slightly weird, but they're our town, but the it doesn't sort of give our house. And actually finding out that I live where in Morris, Minnesota is not hard. Um, so I don't think that actually did convey anything uh, scary, um, but it was good to check. So thank you. What am I doing? I am, uh, oh, here we are, I'm doing this. Um, so we have recompiled. Now let's try reloading. Login. Oh, and same problem. Well, is it the same problem? Um, the answer is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, the problem is different. Um, so that's very cool. So actually I am going to bring this back because now that I've confirmed that those lat long things don't really say anything about where I live, um, that you couldn't easily find, um, uh, uh, anywhere else. Um, so, uh, well, and I mean, 
Morris is a town of 5,000 people, and I've worked at the university here for 31 years. Um, so in fact, figuring out that I live in this very small town in the middle of nowhere, not super hard. Um, on the other hand, we're 45 minutes from a motorway. Um, so it's not like people pass through on our, on their way to anything. Um, so, uh, I don't think it's providing a lot of information, but it's really good to have been thoughtful about it. So thank you very much for bringing it up. I don't tend to think about that. Um, as much as I probably should. Um, okay, so this did change the world. So we had this error here, and now we actually got um, we got a call to finalize login that did, I think, the right thing. So I think it failed because our um, uh, worker code isn't right. But I think that the basic um, idea is heading in the right direction. So I'm like, whoo, yay, happy, happy. So, um, so now we really need to open worker. Actually, so I should I'm quit this and uh, open the worker code. And then, oops, restart that. Um, get the worker code, boom. Oh, what? What did I do? Undo. Um, there we go. And we need to make this code bigger for all the peeps at home. Uh, uh, one more maybe, okay. So there we go, nice big code. Now I think, I think we're now uh, here that this did a bad thing. Um, and so what did it complain about? It complained that, uh, oh, I guess we uh, lost, here we go. Um, so we panicked at line 37, trying to unwrap a none value, line 37. So right here we panicked um, because we tried to get a code value and it biffed at us. Now, I think that if we go back to um, here, let's go here, right? This is, yeah. If we go back here and we look at his back end, so his back end it's going to be different than ours. We're not going to be able to avoid that um, because he's using um, uh, Actix Web uh, when we're doing uh, Cloudflare workers. But fingers crossed, we can make a lot of this work. Um, and uh, so he, where is, he's using the OAuth 2 crate on his back end to help manage things. And where is that happening? Um, Doodly doodly do. Oh, token. I think this is. So we need API token. I think that's where the fun is. Yeah. So here he's using his OAuth OAuth two crate, um, and um, he has a token. Um, uh endpoint and if you post to token which is what github's going to do then he does stuff um, that makes sense and so if we want to use the oauth2 thing then i think we need something like this um, that will hopefully manage our token um, uh, 
Yeah. Um. Okay. So that's going to look. Um, so we have this finalized login, which maybe isn't a great name. And we're going to want it to look more like um, what he's done here. Okay, so let me think about what that means. Um, so we are going to receive a post, and we. Oh, so we've got to get here. I think. Oh, oh, because we're. I was actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I. Yeah, I made a mistake. I realize now that one of many mistakes I made on Tuesday is I was conflating this finalized login I think I was using it in multiple places to do multiple things and um, yeah I'm not sure I had that set up correctly like I'm not convinced any of this makes sense um, and thanks to the joys of uh get i'm going to just blow all this away and i can come back to it if i need to but i think that this whole thing was just wrong um and get that goes to here so i think i'm going to just blow all that away um and so we're going to say post async and i called it um uh, finalize login and we're going to have a mute, a mute request and a context. I don't know which of those I'm going to need if either, oh, come on, async, move, burm, burm, boom. Okay. So that's the setup. So we're going to get this request from GitHub that's going to have the relevant information in it. And we want, and that's sort of the equivalent of this body here. So I think the request is the rough equivalent of this body. Um, and that's... So his token body, uh, so this actually, Actix must be doing some parsing to convert things that are returned into Rust structs. And I don't know if we have, so we have this in the raw request. So we're gonna have to, I think, do some extraction from the request, unless we can parse the body ourselves. Um, which in theory, we could probably do with Saturday. Um, um, and if we use this OAuth2 thing, maybe that does that for us? Um, I don't know. No, because this is coming from Actix. Um, and I don't know if um, Worker uh, has any auto-parsing stuff. Um, is there documentation? Cloud, Flare, Worker, Rust, Craig. That's probably this. Uh, and so we could use some documentation. 
Um, hello, Link. What's this? Oh, this is binding stuff. We're going to need that at some point, but I don't need a durable object. I think there was cloud flare worker rust probably gonna be documentation really um, the name of the crate is oh no this is not what I thought that was going to be. Um, I want, I just want the routing. I want to know, like, can we get parsing? I guess what I really want is parsing. Um, Uh, bitty, 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 bitty. Runtime APIs. Maybe that would be useful. Request. What can I do to a request? Um, so we get a request. Uh, what can we do to a request? That's making a request. I don't want to make one. Uh, I want to get stuff out of it. Properties. So we have body, uh, headers, method, redirect URL. So really they don't provide much that would let us take things apart. Um, that's kind of too bad. Uh, huh. Well, I think we'll just have to do it the annoying way. Um, we'll have to manage this ourselves, uh, which is a little annoying, but life is a challenge. So the request is going to have the code Actually, I don't want that I want this so the request is going to um, redirect back to your site with temporary code and a code parameter as well as the state you provided in the previous step in a state parameter so we need to, and that's going to be, actually that is going to be a get. I think I said it was a post, but I think this is a get. And we should get in the request a code parameter and a um, Now can we just can I just do that to see what that looks like? Um, something bad happened. Oh, I expected a result, but I didn't get one. That makes sense. So we need a response. Okay. Um, we let's see, I bet if we put a what does OK take here?
take something that imples into a string. So I could do like a format bang. We got the request. Boom, 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 ba -la ba, boom, 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 ba. Fingers crossed. No, didn't like that. Uh, request does not implement. Oh, I meant to do debug there. <laughs> Okay, uh, now we compile? No, we don't. Um, what are we grumpy about? No, that's not the problem. Are we grumpy? Or is it something else? Um, I'm a little confused. Try this just from cold. Oh, and now it works. So somehow it just got befuddled. Um, and so now if we reload, Whoa, that was, um, is that the ice repos thing? No, that is not the ice repos thing. What is the URL for ice repos? It is, oh, stop it. Um, 8080? Uh, somewhere here, this should be telling me. Where? Is the URL that we're loading at? Um, you would think that somewhere in here would be the URL that I care about. Well, let's um, kill you and just restart. So I think that will then tell us something. Or not? Well, okay, it just loaded. So what is that? That is localhost 8080 ice repos. That was, I think, the missing piece. Aha! So we got a request header. That's exciting. Um, okay. So the method was get, path was find out of login. We had a bunch of header stuff, um, which I think we didn't really care about. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Now somewhere we should in all of this have code, I hope. Code. Well, that's stuff about like where things are happening, but we don't have code. Oh, is that in the URL? Because I think they're providing it as um, uh, did we get the We got a mismatch error again? Why did we do that? And I didn't see that here. I don't see the mismatch. Oh yeah, we did. So, oh, so it thinks the URL is this not oh that's interesting so even though even though we're not running our worker on their infrastructure 
the call is being made to their infrastructure, or at least GitHub thinks the call is being made to their infrastructure. Well, that's interesting. So I wonder if that means I have to change this to that. And then, uh, then I probably actually also want to change. I'm going to quit that for a hot second. I probably want to change it in, that's over here. Change this as well. Is that really going to work though? I mean, how? No, I don't think so. Cause I think I do want to still go to local host. I assume. Cause otherwise you wouldn't be able to test a new version of things while you were running the uh, a deployed version um because how would it know i don't know actually i'm a little confused about that i'm so confused about everything um so this should compile and then we should start this up and hopefully this will compile Okay, now we go here and local host 8080 ice repos. Okay, log in. Oh, that's different. And I, that I'm guessing is because it really tried going to the Cloudflare infrastructure. Yeah. So I think that what I did, I think this needs to be what um, GitHub thinks I'm talking to or I'm not going to. Yeah. I think it's going to try to talk to the actual Cloudflare infrastructure, and that's just not going to work. Um, uh, so now I shouldn't have to recompile anything after I make that change, I don't think. Local host 8080 ice repos, log in. But now I get this mismatch again. Yes, match. Yeah, right. So how? Hmm. I don't know why. The, um, I really don't understand this mismatch. And I don't know why this is being written this way. Uh, let's see. URL. So they do give us a an air a URI into the GitHub docs, which might be useful. 
Um, so, troubleshooting authorization request errors. Well, let's go look. GitHub OAuth troubleshooting. There we go. So we don't have suspended. Okay. If you provide a redirect URI that doesn't match what you registered with your application, get it will redirect to the register callback URI with the following parameters. Either provide a redirect URI that matches or leave out this parameter to use the default one. So I wonder if we can just leave it out. Maybe we don't have to provide it, but I'm guessing we do because types in Rust mean I can't just leave this out because this is gonna yeah require that field um, so that's not gonna be good we're gonna have to provide something I don't know that we could just do something silly like it's a shame that we can't do a sum or a none on this um, because that would be, um, nice, but that's not going to work. Um, so I'm pretty sure that an empty string is going to be a terrible plan. Um, but you know, why not? Let's give it a shot. Um, oops. Where is, there we are, um, local, ooh, not all caps, thank you, local host, nice repos, relative URL without a base. Nope, so it didn't like that. So we, we do have to provide something, yet if we provide this, which is exactly what we put in, uh, we get a problem. So maybe Cloudflare, Cloudflare Worker, um, Response URI. Uh. Guessing this is not what I want, but um, see that there's anything here that's going to help us a lot. Um, uh, Wrangler. 
moments. No, not helpful. Wrangler dev URL. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it sounds like Wrangler Dev may actually be happening on an edge server somewhere. Is that really what the deal is? Uh, so this says, what does this say? Um, let's see, if we quit that, start it up again. Listening at 0008787. So if we go to that, yeah. And like workers version, I think gives us, no, that doesn't. Maybe I took that out. Um, uh, oh, it's worker version singular. La 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 la. Yeah. So we get things that way. But, oh, 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 hang on. When we did, when we tried oh, this, when I did that, the URL, it does have dot .dev at the end. So, it's, maybe we could distinguish between a dev environment and a uh, deployment environment this way so that if we tell github that we want is that over here yeah if we tell github we want this now, then we oh, I wanted ice repos. There we go. If I say log in, it didn't find it. And it's not doing anything. Let me just turn on local mode. So it provides another couple of URLs. I wonder if I should be trying to use one of those. 
um, if we turn off local mode, what happens? It seems to be grumpy. If I turn on local mode, we're back here. What does Open Dev Tools do? Oh, I think uh, I think I tried that before, and that actually locked up the world. So let's hope we haven't done that. Um, seems like I think it tried to open up a browser or something. Oh, yes, it tried to open Chrome. Why did it try to open Chrome? Um, which is going to be bad because I have like a million windows in Chrome and Chrome wasn't started. So who knows what this is going to do to the universe. Um, can I get out of here? I wonder if we change this to one of these for fun. Uh, it seems super unlikely that it's going to help us any. Um, come on, Chrome. Go let Go die, Chrome. There we go. So, if that's now running there, in theory, we should be able to ice repos. Ooh, weird. I wonder what that. Hmm. Local host. <gasps> Did something happen then? Holy moly. Maybe that worked? No. Because there's still a, uh, a mismatch issue. Um, yeah, we got the URI must mismatch. Must match. But what? That's weird. I wonder why we got... Um, uh, hello from workers because that changes the universe slightly because you would have gotten that from here oh I didn't put in I know I know I know I, know. I didn't put finalized login in here So I need to update that. And also I need to change, make sure this matches what's in the code. That's over here. So this needs to match. Um, and now we need to make sure that that's rebuilt. Da -da 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 -da. And then go back to Safari, uh, Ice Repos. Okay, apparently not. There we go. Go. Ooh, this is different. No, it's not different. It's just smaller. Yeah. With the same mismatch problem. So the URL though was 127.001. Hmm. That at least seemed to be right though. Whereas before we had all that dev stuff. but it claims that the URL didn't match. Arr. I don't know what the 
this means. Ah, and it's 11.43. This is super frustrating. I feel like this is going to take like a month of work. Um, because I don't know what I'm doing. That is very frustrating, and I don't understand. And if we turn local mode off, does that change anything? Um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Local host ice repos. Yeah, I wish they did too. I am. Uh, okay. What did I? Oh, yeah. So I turned local mode off. And I got that Safari couldn't even open the page. Because Safari couldn't talk. Oh, couldn't talk to 127. But I think Safari could talk to. Zero zero zero. If I'm not running, um, in local mode, and I feel like I saw somewhere, um, uh, need zero dot zero dot zero dot zero instead of one twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one. Uh. Okay. So zero 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 listens on every available network interface. Um, huh. And I feel like I saw somebody say somewhere that you needed, if you're using um, Wrangler Dev, failed to terminate the proxy server. That's weird. Can we start this up again? That you really had to use the zero 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 for some reason. Um, so uh, uh, just make sure that that's working. So if we go there, we get stuff. Okay. So then if we go back to here and we say that. It's something as simple as we need a slash at the end. That would really make me annoyed if that turned out to actually work. I would be much of grumpy. Uh, Localhost, nice repos, log 
Oh, I, did I change? Yeah, change this back to zero, 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 zero. Wait for this to build. It's all frustrating. Uh, and I just feel so like flaily. Okay. That's weird. Oh, I, I, no. Oh yeah, I left out the finalize um, login part. So I need the whole thing. And that doesn't have a slash after it because I think they're gonna use question marks to pass in the um, the code and the state. Yeah. And we get the mismatch error. Yeah, and they're using question mark to provide that the error information here. So I do not know why we get um okay, go away, you guys. Oh, stop it. Enough. Um bunch of people inviting me to meetings. So we got finalized login, question mark, a whole bunch of error stuff. And So it is sending it to, like it sent it to this version of the app because this version got this piece. But if we go to here, it seems to think it was somehow all of that. But that just doesn't make sense. Because we're not, we haven't deployed, so we don't really have something running there. Um, so that would never actually work. Now, when we try going to local, uh, turn on local, actually, let me Google. Wrangler dev local mode. Wrangler commands. Local mode. Host to act as origin local mode. That's not what we're doing. Wrangler Dev command establishes a connection local host and Cloudflare server that hosts your worker in development. So it does seem like somehow uh, it is getting pushed out to development. But it says that I can send requests to localhost 8787, which is matching that up there. 
and we should get stuff. Um, now, persist local. This runs an ephemeral local version of your worker. It will not be able to access data stored on the Cloudflare's edge. If you'd like to persist data locally, da, 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 da. so I think it needs to be able to provide the stuff on the edge instead of actually really running locally so that um, you have access to their data store, um, their key value data store uh, and secrets because that stuff is actually managed on their edge servers. Um, and So we probably really are getting a, uh, where was that? Over here. We probably really are getting ice repos, McPhee, workers, dev, in some sense. Um, and hmm. now it's interesting here they say localhost 8787 and we've got 0000 8787. Is that a configuration thing we did? I honestly don't remember. Um, uh, oh, everybody just stop leaving me messages. Uh, do not disturb. Thank you. Um, no, so it's not something here. Did we do it here somewhere? No. We did not appear to specify anywhere what the URL would be. So this just might be that they've changed things. Um, I mean, we could try changing uh, this to localhost. I can't imagine this is going to be a good idea. Um, and then we will need to change this to localhost. And wait for that to finish compiling. And then come here, local host, ice repos, login. Same problem. Redirect URI didn't match. And again, they're doing ice repos, McPhee, workers, dev, is what they seem to be looking at. I don't know what if we I feel like we tried this before but I'm kind of running out of ideas so if we did that so when we did that we got that there was nothing there right um, and so we need this to be that Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's well, definitely been bad. HPS. Okay. Recompile. And I'm going to have to quit here because I'm going to need to take a break. Um, I'm certainly being stupid. This is 
just blind. Yeah, I'm flailing terribly here. Um, I clearly need to do. Yeah. Unless, I mean, do I need to restart this somehow? Uh, let's exit this. Respin this up. Now, if we do localhost, ice repos, no, I can't imagine that it's a problem of we're just not getting, like here, this still works, right, and worker version yeah so we are running the development thing I don't know I'm lost and watching me fl flail around here is probably not super useful so I think we'll call it quits I apologize I really don't know what the deal is here um, but I need to figure that out and so I'll be back at two, being far more competent, I expect. Um, so I will actually be finishing up the segmented file system client. Um, I think we're pretty close to done on that. Um, so I think we'll have the basic functionality in place pretty quickly. And then um, we can work on things like improving the air handling or um, oh, there was something else that was a could be done um, oh no that's the same thing uh, yeah I don't remember I think there was some was another thing I'll have to look um, actually I think I mentioned it um, on Twitter this morning profile, what did I say to myself? Um, uh, oh yeah, I added some property based testing. Um, and that's not finished by any means, but there's actually some pretty reasonable testing in place. So we'll talk about that. Um, and uh, might add some more of that, but I feel like we might be able to wrap that thing up by some definition of wrap that thing up um, in this afternoon's stream. Then, as I mentioned at the beginning, time changes here tonight. Um, so if you're in a different time zone or if your time zone changed either before this or after this, be prepared for sort of a synchronization issue. Um, and uh, so we will fall back an hour tonight. Um, and then Tuesday, we will come back to ICE Repos. I'm going to see if I can try to spend some time, maybe Monday. I've got Sundays kind of booked up, but maybe Monday, try to spend some time on my own, figuring out what the heck's going on here. Um, and maybe do some simpler examples off on the side. Um, uh, because I'm completely baffled at the moment. Um, and watch having you watch me just be completely confused is not super useful. Um, so I think stepping laterally um, for a second uh, might be the important thing to do. Um, 
And then Wednesday night, we'll be uh, returning to the uh, evolution of computation problem. Um, uh, we've got some, I was able to do some benchmarking after last Wednesday's uh, stream. And I've got a bunch of data. Um, basically, Rust, depending on the circumstances, the worst Rust did was about 50 times faster than Clojure. Um, there were other contexts where it was more like 100 times faster. Um, but, uh, um, and some places as much as 136 times faster than Clojure. Um, so it seems to depend on the architecture um, and uh, other details. And I'm not entirely sure I understand why Clojure is performing poorly in some circumstances. Um, uh, Rust seems to be taking better advantage of large numbers of cores than Clojure is, which I'm a little surprised by and I don't fully understand. Um, but Rust is definitely kicking butt and taking names. So I'm pretty happy. So we'll... Um, go over those results in a little more detail on Wednesday. And then I think I'm going to call the GA part of the project done and instead work on extending the Rust GA system to handle genetic programming. So evolving actual programs instead of just bit strings represented in the push language which was designed specifically for evolution. Um, and because that's where I'm really headed is I want to see how much slower or faster Rust is compared to Clojure when evolving programs. Because that's what my research group is mostly doing. And if we can um, uh, get that working better, that would be really nifty. Um, so that's what we'll be working on Wednesday. Um, if we finish the segmented file system uh, project this afternoon, like I suspect, I might turn the Saturday afternoon streams into evolution computation streams as well, um, because I want to, I think, put more, I think the, the, the push the genetic programming stuff is going to take some time and energy, and I think I want to devote that slot to trying to make that happen. So that's what we're doing. Um, thank you for your patience, and this was probably not the most illuminating stream ever, to be honest with you. Um, uh, hopefully by Tuesday I'll have something working that I kind of understand. So... Thank you all. We'll talk to you later. And uh, yeah, goodbye. Burr, burr, burr.